The Edible Bean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Hensel Co-op. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to the Edible Bean School. Today I am down in Middlesex County and I'm joined by Megan Scott from Hensel Co-op. Megan, how's it going? It's going great. Thanks for having me here today, Bern. Hey, an awesome field of white beans and I want to talk about fungicides here today. Um, it's been wet. Fungicides are going to be really important. It's a big question for growers. First of all, why are fungicides so important to the success of white beans? Yeah, so white beans and edible beans are fairly susceptible to white mold and anthracnose. Uh, white beans and black beans in particular are more so for anthracnose. And uh, really, they can be yield robbers as well as quality robbers. And in order to be successful with spraying fungicides, really the most important thing is to make sure that they're applied preventatively. Yeah. Talk a little bit more about white mold, obviously one of the big culprits here. When do we see that in the crop? When does it set in? What do we need to be looking for? Sure. So you're going to start to see potential white mold infection once the beans are kind of in that flowering stage. And as, as you can see in a field like this, you've got a dense canopy and we've had really humid kind of moderate temperatures. And really that's a perfect condition for white mold infection. So in order to protect the beans, you really want to get that fungicide on when the beans start to flower and you start to see those pin beans there. Um, so start scouting your fields once the, the beans have started to flower and uh, check them a few days later. Once you have more open flowers and you start to see some of those first flowers turn to yellow, you're going to notice pin beans. And pin beans really are when you want to start to spray those, those beans with that first pass of fungicide for white mold. Mm. Now that's timing for our first pass uh, on a fungicide. What about uh, multiple applications of second pass? What's our timing there? Yeah, so if you read the label of most fungicides, they would be roughly seven to 10 days after first application. Really base your second application on kind of the conditions and your general level of risk for further infection. So if we have weather like this, it's gonna to continue to be wet and your canopy's nice and filled, uh, you really should start to consider uh, a second application. So, so 10 days after your first application, get back out in the field and get a second application on there and keep them protected for another couple weeks. Now when growers are walking their fields, they're out scouting, what should they be looking for for white mold? Yeah, so when you're out in the field looking for white mold, really pull out your canopy and look in the bottom. So white mold infections are most likely going to start on those old flowers that have fallen off or the necrotic tissue at the bottom of the plant. So take a look down there. It's kind of got a snowy white powdery patches that you'll start to notice on the plants. And really, if you start to notice that and you haven't sprayed yet, it's, it's very important to get out there and spray as soon as you can. So Megan, another disease you mentioned, anthracnose. Tell us about that. What do we need to look for there? Yeah, so anthracnose is a lot more common in white beans and black beans than it is in our larger seeded beans. And really, get down in your canopy. You want to look for uh, lesions that are kind of that reddish color, and they're going to they're going to kind of create a crater in that um, in that pod as well as the stems. You could also look on the underside of the leaves. If you notice a lot of reddening of the veins, that could be an indication that you have some anthracnose infection. And there's really a, a few important things to remember with that. If you were to see anthracnose in your field, the best thing you can do is walk out of there because if you're going to walk across your field that has anthracnose infection, you could actually spread it yourself by walking through it. Now, um, a lot of other things go into spraying. What other tips do you have for growers? Things like water volumes, for example. Yeah, so water volumes with fungicides are pretty important. Uh, we really need to get that fungicide right, right down to the bottom of the canopy because it's not going to move through the plant. So really 20 gallons minimum is what we'd ask. Even 25 would do a better job. Protect those flowers at the bottom of the canopy and even consider adding something like a spray deposition agent. Um, interlock is something that we often add to our tanks and that just really helps get those droplets all the way to the bottom of the canopy. What about this year? What about insecticides and insects? Um, Megan, um, it's a disease year. Is it an insect year? Should it be something I'm thinking about when I'm revving up the sprayer? Yeah, so always should have insects on your mind. I think it's important to scout the field. Don't make a broad spectrum application unless there's a reason that you need to be out there. But really go out to your field, scout. Western bean cutworm is something that we're obviously concerned about. So 10 days after peak flight, that's when we could start seeing them come into this field here. 
And uh, if you start to notice any sort of feeding, then it might warrant as an application. And, and those insecticides can go right in the t spray tank with those fungicides. Hey, final point from you um, on 2021. It has been a strange year, very dry, now very wet. Um, you know, spraying fungicides is so important. Any tips for growers right now as they go forward into this season uh, and, you know, getting that fungicide on? Yeah, absolutely. So I think out of all the years that we've had these past few, this year really is a, an ideal year where we're going to see higher incidences of white mold in the field. So really should consider at least two applications and uh, make sure they're timely. Don't, don't, don't space them out too much in between one another. You want to make sure that you don't allow any white mold infection to come in before spraying. Well, Megan, um, great to have you on the uh, Edible Bean School. Thanks for stopping by. Yeah, thanks a lot for having me, Bern. Yeah.